And then we move on to Sleeping Beauty. Okay. Um, that sounds bad. Let me start over. Uh, <laughs> um, Sleeping Beauty. Um, yes. Maleficent Girl Boss. <laughs> Slay Queen boots the house down um can i go ahead and dump a hot take right now maleficent i think is a bit overrated i can i can see that i can see that i'll tell you why because her style is badass Mm -hmm. her presentation is badass she has presentation down like Yes. I'll give her that. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't think she's a character. She's just evil. Yeah, it's not until, like, many years later that they actually give Maleficent a character. (laughs) Yeah, and the fact that, like, her motivation is pretty weak because, sure, she curses Aurora, but she has her goons looking for a baby for 16 years. Like why didn't they have a meeting about that? <laughs> I feel like that wasn't a mistake on her part. It was a mistake for her not to communicate that sooner. <laughs> yeah, but I mean like she, she obviously put too much trust in them. I mean, yeah, but I mean she just she assumed her minions would understand that time is a thing. And that eventually the baby would grow up. (laughs) So I can understand her being frustrated over that. (laughs) I can understand it, but it's also kind of her fault. (laughs) But also not really. I I don't, I don't entirely blame her for that. So yeah. And my other thing, and plus it's a one off fucking joke. So drop it. (laughs) I I know. (laughs) But if she was an active villain, then she would be, Lurking, looking that stuff up herself, basically. She'd be like, where where are these women? Why are they not at the castle? I should be doing everything in my power I mean, to make sure that, like... She was. She was sending out her her raven to, like, scout places. And that's how... Why like, couldn't I mean, she, she go anywhere? Because she's Maleficent. <laughs> I think people fear her enough that she won't just get killed on the spot. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm, th- I'm saying that she she has gotten this power and she's like, why should I have to dirty my own hands? Like, make my minions do it. But she's the mistress of all evil, so I don't know if she cares about getting her hands dirty. <laughs> okay, we're both making assumptions about her, so... <laughs> because there's not enough there. <laughs> yes. Um, That's the problem. I can see where that is. But I also think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> and I think you're not considering all of the textual evidence. <laughs> and I think you're reading it too much into one-off jokes. So Wow. Wow. I, I figured we were going to get to this point. Was, like literally one person looking into everything and one person looking into just enough. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, go on. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say Maleficent is my favorite villain because she's not. <laughs> yeah. That's Mother Gothel and Cruella. But <laughs> um, I do th- I do think, I mean, she does her job in this movie. She is not yes. in this movie yes, to be a three-dimensional character that has all of these motivations. She is in this movie to be the one-dimensional div- villain. Yeah. Um, she is the dragon that the mythical hero must defeat. Yeah, and to be fair, like because the musical score to this movie is based off a of ballet. Yes. It, that the the presentation definitely supports that. Yeah. Though it is a movie that you can do anything with, but I I'm not angry about them. They had they had a vision choice. for this for this movie, 
and I feel like they they did a well with that vision. Um, and I'll get into that in just a moment. So. Um, the I mean, obviously the music is beautiful. Um, yes, yes. And I do like Aurora. I I like Aurora. I don't know if that's a a hot take. <laughs> I think a hotter take would be of the three classical princesses, where would you rank her? Uh, because for uh, me, she's dead last. <laughs> uh, you might hate me for this. <laughs> she's going above Snow White. She's going above Snow White. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I, I don't hate Snow White. I like Snow White. <laughs> it's the voice, isn't it? It's not out of malice. It is the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Snow White just has this very airy... Very heavy on the vibrato. Very heavy on the vibrato. But like falsetto vibrato. <laughs> It is a it is a fake voice that she's putting on, so yes. Yeah, so it's like, uh Now shall you deal with me, O'Reilly, and all the powers of hell <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty badass moment though, you gotta admit. It is. Like that's it really a, that's a pretty is. badass moment. <laughs> so I vibe with Aurora. Honestly, me too, bitch. I wanna take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um okay. <laughs> can we also talk about the fact that I'm pretty sure the kingdom has been like asleep for like hundreds of years? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's literally one night. I don't think so. Cuz I mean, you see how um oh, fuck, Pr- Philip, that's his name, yes. Philip? <laughs> yeah. Um I mean, he he ages. And the only reason, like, that he's, like, reinvigorated is because of the, the three fairies. No, that was a vision that Maleficent forecasted in her crystal ball, essentially. I don't... Uh, she was showing him a vision of his future. Uh, I don't know. I'm confident that that was a vision. I don't think so. But... Uh, we're we're going to have such... We're going to have so many arguments on that deep dive. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's not a Be huge deal listeners. now. But <laughs> no, not now, not now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'll ha- I'll have to watch the movie again. Um, I could be misunderstanding that, um, but I also don't think it was a single night. Um, now I will admit, Aurora does not have much character. <laughs> she doesn't. She just doesn't get the chance to have much character. Um, to be fair, I don't think this story allows her. No, to. it doesn't. The same way it doesn't allow Maleficent to, it doesn't allow her to. But it also doesn't allow Philip to have much, either. No, the fairies are the only ones with the leg room. <sighs> yeah, the fairies are the only ones. I mean, <laughs> Aurora and Philip's parents have more character than Aurora and Philip. <laughs> mm, I think Philip stands up compared to Aurora. I, mean, I certainly think they have the best romance of the three princess movies. I, d- I do, too. Um, but that's just because we see how they feel about each other. Yeah, like we see them actually interact, and they actually have chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I give them that. Um, but overall, I like Sleeping Beauty. Um, music's good, animation's good. I like the art style. I feel I feel I feel like the color work is also very impressive. Absolutely. I like their usage of colors in this movie and and lighting. The way they use Absolutely. lighting is Absolutely. amazing. Um so I put it if I could I would put it on the same place as Lady and the Tramp and A tier. <laughs> but okay. it's 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 adjacent to Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> okay, but it is in B tier. It's in A tier. A tier. Yes. Okay. Lady and the Tramp okay. and Sleeping Beauty are both in A tier. Okay. I only have one movie in B tier. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, actually, how many do I have? Okay, I have three in my B tier. <laughs> okay. So to start off my thoughts after interrupting you several times because I, <laughs> I'm feeling good, but I'm also feeling cunty. <laughs> like, um, I'd like to start off my piece with a quote from uh, Mary Costa. She's talking about how she got into the role of uh, Aurora or Briar Rose, as she refers to her. Mm-hmm. She, this is a meeting that she had with Walt Disney before she started recording. And this is what he had to say to her. Um, he said, You must know Briar Rose so well that you actually become the character. How does she feel about her godmothers and living in the forest? How does she feel about the many shades of green in the trees and shrubs and the different colors of the flowers? Does she laugh and cry with her godmothers? I want you to let all of those vibrant colors respond to each thought that comes from your mind and heart. Memorize your lines, and when you get in front of that microphone, I want you to become Briar Rose. Let all of those rich colors in your mind drop to your vocal palette and paint with your voice. Unquote. And you see, the reason why I bring it up is because I think that's the best direction she got from anybody on this movie. <laughs> Yeah. No one else was giving her that level of material on this movie. <laughs> and it shows because <laughs> because of this if there's one thing this movie has going against it, it's it's writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is so weak. Except for like small moments. Small moments of dialogue, particularly from Maleficent. P- particular- particularly from Maleficent. Yeah. But I feel like that's really indicative of why this movie falls short, because Walt couldn't give that kind of assistance to most people on this staff because he was too focused on Disneyland. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, this is a movie that benefited and suffered from his lack of supervision. <laughs> mm-hmm. And a lot of the things that you and I like about this movie were his choices. Mm. Like he wanted it to be this epic moving illustration. He wanted it to have the music of Tchaikovsky's ballet. Mm. I don't think he wanted the characters to play like this. Particularly because nobody, not even him, refers to Aurora as Aurora in any media about this movie. Mm -hmm. It's always the princess or Briar Rose. Yeah. Uh, But everyone knows who Maleficent is, so... I mean, Maleficent's kind of a girl boss, so... (laughs) She really is. I'm not... Yeah, that's not up for argument. She is. But I guess the point I'm trying to get at is that this movie could have easily been Snow White 2.0. Mm-hmm. If not for those changes. And I think that's why I still hold Snow White in higher regard. Mm -hmm. Because the archetypes and the tropes that we associate with Disney movies were invented for Snow White. Yeah. With Sleeping Beauty, they used them to play it safe. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. And I think that's why I... Of the three, I give it the harshest treatment. Mm-hmm. Because it could have been everything and more. But these art, these animators and these story people, they didn't... <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't have it in them. Like, they weren't confident without Walt being around to tell them what to do. <laughs> yeah. And it shows. And, uh, yeah, every critical reception review that it got at the time was pretty much just deserved. <laughs> I still like so, it, though. <laughs> yes. And, and, honestly, even with all of that, it does not take away from the fact that I'm putting this movie in the respect and appreciate tier above Lady and the Tramp. Fair. Yeah. So it's behind Cinderella. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that felt good. <laughs> okay. So then we move on to 101 Dalmatians. All right. 
This is my pride and joy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, 101 Dalmatians. Um, look. This is, for me, this is like the pinnacle of Disney animal movies. It's my favorite one above Aristocats. Once again, it's one of those things where like, I mean, the dogs are still dogs. <laughs> Mm-hmm. they're still dogs um yeah. and i and i do find um i do find a little joy in the fact that like the dogs are calling the humans their pets i think that's a yeah, little that funny is really cute it's really it's it's just a it's a cute little thing um and um i mean this is one of the few movies that like i actually watch like the credits at the beginning of because i <laughs> like what they did with it yeah, very lively. Yes, it's very lively. I like how they took in, you know, the Dalmatian uh, print, um, and they used that as like, and they timed it to music, and all of that. And I, I just really like it. Um, it's art on its own when it's a fucking credit sequence, you know. <laughs> yes. Um. And then, um. I like uh, Pongo and Purdy. Um. Perdita. Um, mm-hmm. I like their relationship. Um, it's it's pretty much the backbone of the movie, along with, uh, of course, um, Roger and Anita. I think they I think they reflect each other pretty well. And then um, Cruella is obviously a strong point. Mm-hmm. Girl boss, <laughs> the girl bossiest girl boss. <laughs> the scariest girl. The boss. scariest girl boss. <laughs> I mean, she is, she is gaslight gatekeep, <laughs> girl boss. On steroids. On steroids. Horace and Jasper, very silly, but also a little scary. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Jasper is the taller one, right? Uh, I think yeah. Horace is the fat one, and then... No, I think Horace is the tall one. Hold on. Jasper's the taller one. <laughs> okay. I was okay. right. Um, I know that, I mean, both of them, um, but like, I mean, especially Jasper, they're both kind of not great Jewish stereotypes, but also that is like a very common uh, character design thing to like give people like long hooked noses if they're evil, but that is like a Jewish stereotype. So I do have to acknowledge that. But otherwise, I mean, I feel like this is, like, it's a solid movie, in my opinion. I think the music's good. I wish, um, the one, the problem with, you know, there being 101 Dalmatians is the fact that you don't really get a chance to know the 99 puppies, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you get a little bit of time with, like, the original uh, 13, but even then you don't really get to know any of them except for like um lucky and patch but i mean even then like you don't really know them um you only know lucky because you know he's the one that gets revived at the beginning of the movie um and then patch is the one that has the patch on his eye um Mm -hmm. so that is like one thing that like I wish there could have been more character development with the original 13 at least. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, they did what they could with the time frame. Yeah. Um, and I do like the side characters um, of uh, the Colonel <laughs> uh, and then Captain and um, Lieutenant. I think they're very funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I like their little bits. <laughs> Yeah, they are pretty fabulous. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Colonel and Lieutenant Lieutenant definitely have something going on. Like that's <laughs> that is a gay couple if I've ever seen one. <laughs> um, here for it. I'm for it. Um, but yeah. So I put 101 Dalmatians in S tier above Alice in Wonderland and Cinderella. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is the movie where we split dramatically. <laughs> I don't hate this movie. 
by no means. But I also think Corella Deville is the only thing bringing energy to it. <laughs> That's not to say that other characters like they're not giving anything. It's just that like I think it's it's the same problem I had with the Aristocats, where it's like there's no drama in this movie without Corella Deville, aside from them potentially losing a pup. Yeah. Which, I mean... I mean, but, I mean, at the same time, there still would have been troubles, because without Corella DeVille, then Roger wouldn't have had a successful song, so they would be a struggling couple. Also, is that even legal? <laughs> to write a song about a real person like that? <laughs> I mean, diss tracks are a thing. <laughs> I know, And they have like... been forever. I just never thought about that. That's, that's I kind think, of funny to me. I think it is legal. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, then yeah. We good. <laughs> uh, I wonder if part of my beef has to do with the fact that the art style, it's really interesting. Very appealing. But I am just so used to the polish of the old like ink and paint. <laughs> mm of the earlier movies. And it also doesn't help that a lot of people got laid off because of Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I know that Walt wasn't particularly happy with this style that Ken Anderson came up with. I don't hate it. It's, it's just, if anything, I think it, it makes perfect sense for this movie and not so much for the later ones. Mm. But, it is still cute. It's really sweet. I feel for the dogs. <laughs> but I'm gonna put it in eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I thought things were gonna get real for a minute. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Although, now that we've been talking about some stuff, I will say that I have it initially behind peter pan but i'm gonna put it above it y you now, should put so. it above peter pan <laughs> i'm gonna put it above peter pan i'm glad we can at least agree on that <laughs> yes <laughs> although there's that one section where they put soot all over themselves to like trick corella yes however i don't think because i mean they're dogs and it's a Labrador <laughs> if it was really meant to be offensive then they would still have a white slit around their lips yeah but I don't think it was I think it's just yeah, no 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 they no, were no. doing what they could with what they had <laughs> yeah 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 because I mean it makes sense to roll around and soot to look like a different breed of dog yes yeah but yeah I'm just, I'm just putting it out, that out there. I don't know how conscious they were of that. Yeah. I might that one I might be looking too deep into it, but like I mean cuz I mean I've had a similar thought. I've I've thought on it too. But I I don't think it was meant in that way. Yeah. I don't think it was meant to be malicious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but yeah. At least we got some good out of that discussion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which means we can move on to the Sword in the Stone. Hello, Sword in the Stone. <laughs> um, okay. Where are you putting it, girl? Girl, where are you putting it? <laughs> so, it's above Peter Pan. <laughs> but not far. Uh, <laughs> it's in B tier. I don't have the same nostalgia for this movie than I do with the other movies in this era because I just didn't watch it as a kid. <laughs> I don't know why. It just mm -hmm. I just never watched it. Neither did I, really. Yeah. Um, and then watching it now, it's just kind of like... I would probably like it more if I watched it as a kid. <laughs> um, yeah. Because it's, it's just one of those movies where, like, 
I would need the nostalgia to con- to defend it as much as I do with the other films. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I think it's a solid movie, but it's just not. <laughs> I don't have the. I don't have the fortitude to defend it. It's very mediocre. Yeah, it's very mediocre. Um, but that puts it above Peter Pan, so <laughs> I put it in B tier. You know what? Uh, <laughs> at least being racially insensitive still makes you interesting. <laughs> this movie does not merit any interest for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, it is very boring. <laughs> I... I could care less about anything that happens that doesn't involve Merlin, Archimedes, and Madame Mim. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how much effort anyone in the story department put on this. <laughs> like, it was basically written up by one guy, Bill Pete. Yeah. But um, there's still so many issues. Like, the fact that Merlin tries to educate Arthur so that he can become a good king and I don't the the lessons that he teaches him we never see them get paid off (laughs) yeah it's very weak education Mm -hmm. and Madame Mim it's like she's fabulous but like I could say the same thing about the Queen of Hearts you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) I she has more going on (laughs) um and yeah, this is just... I Of these movies, I'd say this is the laziest. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Like, it inspires me to be a good person, but not to a great extent. <laughs> yeah. So I'm putting it in the dud category. I can understand that. <laughs> yeah. This... I... Again... Peter Pan, it has more things that I like. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah. So that's just where we are in this world. (laughs) Which means we can finally get to the Jungle Book. Okay, so... I used to not like the Jungle Book. (laughs) I don't really know why. Um, I think... Maybe because the orangutan freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, he is a bit out there. I think I think the orangutan and then also Shere Khan freaked me out. But <laughs> now I can kind of appreciate it. I kind of I kind of vibe with it. Um, I mean, it's still not my favorite um, of this era for sure. Probably because I still have some lingering being freaked out by some of these characters. Mm. But I can at least enjoy it. And there are some catchy songs in here. Animation is pretty good, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. It's a solid movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just, I have some hangups that uh, like uh, not that don't allow me to fully enjoy the movie. You know. So. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, I felt uncomfortable about Mowgli's derp face at the end. Okay, <laughs> glad we agree on that. <laughs> Even as a kid, I was like, "What? that is weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, it goes above Sword in the Stone, but below Lady in the Tramp. So, kind of, it's like B tier, but like, yeah. <laughs> but I actually put it above Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> I just can't enjoy it that much, because like, I just, I get freaked out by the characters. Honestly, I don't like I how some this... of them move. I get it. I get it. Like, how do you mean? Like, is it like an anatomical thing or is it like... Yeah. Like, it just, it just, how, sometimes how they move looks weird. Does it look cheap? A little, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the budget was for this movie, but... I know they were doing it for at least four years. But uh, I'd say the saving graces are this movie's soundtrack. I love pretty much every song. 
I mean, I do like the songs. I like the music. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to go out there and say it. I Want to Be Like You is the banger of the movie. It is. <laughs> yeah. I know that there's some talk about like racist connotations. Uh, but I mean, they could have done worse by casting Louis Armstrong <laughs> to reinforce the stereotype. So I'm yeah. glad that they went with an Italian guy. <laughs> yeah. I just... God, that song goes so hard. <laughs> um, as does pretty much every other song. But, um, and also the relationship between Baloo, Mowgli, and Bagheera. Mm-hmm. It is so earnest and sweet and funny and just let them be gay dads. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, it's everything to me. <laughs> um, and I love that the movie, like, it does have that conversation about, like, you know, like, Mowgli's not really meant to be with us. He's supposed to be in another place, another echelon. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like it denounces them either. I mean, the... My only issue with that comparison is the fact that they're animals. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's like comparing gay people to animals. <laughs> um, I know. But and I, I can, can see also it. see the comparison. Um, I just choose to look at it positively. <laughs> yes. Um, and they do, like, they are, like, a positive influence on Mowgli's life, so... Yeah. I can I can look past it. <laughs> yeah. They're his best buddies. They are. They're his dads. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the fact that they literally go walking arm in arm into the sunset. Literally. <laughs> it's so good. Um Yeah. It's really weird that I I, I didn't really care for the mellowness in Dalmatians or Sword in the Stone but in this movie it really fits mm. like it's just so chill bro like let's just cool it <laughs> <laughs> and I love that especially for 1967 like are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> cryogenics were literally a thing when this movie came out <laughs> oh my god <laughs> That's wild. Which, yeah, which is why I think that's where the the Walt Disney Frozen Head myth comes from. Mm -hmm. But he but totally froze his head. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I know he did not. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But don't give him any more. <laughs> um, I am winking in your... Morse code right now. The location <laughs> of Walt Disney's Frozen Head. <laughs> it is in Spaceship Earth. <laughs> Epcot Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Epcot Ball, third half of the dome. <laughs> right behind the hot, the hot scientist lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know which one. <laughs> you know which one. <laughs> I swear, oh, I will riot if they ever remove that woman. Yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. Is she in the 1970s portion? Uh, the the really pretty black lady. I think so. Yeah. With the afro. Yeah, I think I think it's 1970s. Yeah. She's Ad a treasure. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Look, I love Epcot's goofy little golf ball. Okay. <laughs> I know. I do too. The worst moment was when they had that beacon on the side. Oh, the, I hate the f stupid fucking magic wand. I don't understand it. How dare they do that? Yep. Just be happy they got rid of it. What makes me even more mad is that they got rid of fucking Mickey's hat in Hollywood Studios. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? You had that I as the park's at icon for like No, the Chinese over theater was the icon. Once they added the magic hat, that became the icon. And then but they just What was there before it? it? <laughs> okay, but the Chinese theater is boring. But it fits the park theme. <laughs> the park theme is obsolete. 
They've changed <laughs> it. And it's been changing since they fucking built the thing. Then stop calling it Hollywood. <laughs> I can't change what they have the name as. I know. We'll write a letter to our congressman in Florida. <laughs> That'll be the one thing we can use against Disney and for uh, DeSantis. <laughs> Ugh. Don't even I hate to make a joke out of that it, fucking but... guy. I swear to God. I'm sorry. But... I'm. Uh... He's a piece of shit. <laughs> I swear I'm going to have an aneurysm if I hear of one more stupid thing he's doing. <laughs> I did hear about one stupid thing. I'm going to have an aneurysm if I hear about okay. one more stupid thing he's done. <laughs> A Florida grade school teacher was being investigated for showing Strange World in their classroom. What? Yes, that was a real thing. Oh my god. Yeah. I haven't gotten any updates in the weeks following. I hope that they are exonerated. Yeah, because that's (laughs) stupid. It's fucking dumb, man. Ugh. But on the bright side, they had a pride night at Disneyland a few days ago. They (laughs) did. Their very yes. first Pride night. Yes. I did actually find out, um, my therapist, um, uh, she has a daughter that's, like, in, like, a dance team. Um, mm-hmm. And they do, like, you know, competitions at Disney World. Um, they actually lifted all of their, like, restrictions for contestants. Um, oh, yeah? So, like, like, if you want to have dyed hair, if you want to have tattoos, you can have that now. Um, which is oh. wild because oh. they haven't changed their guidelines for, like, 50 years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they just lifted all of them in one go. <laughs> so there's no more like restrictions on like doing the competitions in Disney world. Amazing. Yeah. And they like, didn't like make an announcement or anything either. They just like to- quietly told each representative, <laughs> like yeah. they were just like, yeah, all those, all those just restrictions, they're gone. <laughs> just do it. Don't let your dreams stay dreams. Just do it. Yeah. So I, I, I got to commend them for that. Absolutely. But uh, the Jungle Book. The Jungle Book. <laughs> um, uh, I put it in the respect and appreciate tier between Sleeping Beauty and Lady and the Tramp. All right. So it's in my top five, surprisingly. Considering your hangups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm but, sorry, uh, I just, I would enjoy it more if I didn't find some of the characters freaky. <laughs> it's it's one of those Disney animal movies that I can't get behind, which is rare. <laughs> yeah. Which I was kind of thinking, it's like, my top three are pretty much human-based. <laughs> <laughs> My top three... I mean, my top three are 101 Dalmatians, Alice in Wonderland, and Cinderella. Yeah. Alice is the most ambiguous. Yeah. Yeah. It's got some interesting things going on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess that brings us to um, going from bottom to top. Yes. Um, so C tier, we got Peter Pan. Um, B tier, we got Jungle Book and Sword in the Stone. A tier, Sleeping Beauty and Lady and the Tramp. And then S tier, 101 Dalmatians, Alice in Wonderland, and Cinderella. Okay. I have nothing in the Chicken Little category. (laughs) Somehow Peter Pan is not bad enough to put in that tier. (laughs) Uh, But in Dud, I have the Sword in the Stone. In Ite, I have Peter Pan and 101 Dalmatians. Respect and Appreciate, we have Lady and the Tramp, The Jungle Book, and Sleeping Beauty. And in the Mashiz tier, we have Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland. Nice. We appreciate the weirdos here at Disney Real to Real. We do. <laughs> yeah, I guess the thing I want to reflect on before we get to my final question is a quote from Walt. Mm-hmm. I believe it's from 1956. He was talking about uh, the reception to subsequent animated films after the release of Snow White. Mm-hmm. And he was referring to his audiences um, when using the word they in, in this, uh, by the way. So what he said was, 
course, then the, they wanted more Snow Whites, the same as they wanted more Three Little Pigs. And I remember the ones that followed were uh, disappointing in a way. And for years afterwards, I hated Snow White because every time I'd make a feature after that, they'd always compare it with Snow White, and it wasn't as good as Snow White. And I actually got around to the point I hated Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah, it, and I kind of get where he's coming from. Yeah, I can definitely see where he's coming from. Because he wanted to go off and do so many artistic things. He just wanted to make Fantasia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just wanted people to enjoy Fantasia, god damn it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and report commies. <laughs> and report commies. <laughs> and also call every every person who plays a violin an F word. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. What's wrong with wanting the simple things in life? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I guess that relates to a question that I was going to ask you, which is that. Mm -hmm. what are you looking for when you watch a Disney movie? And I base that on three distinct things. Are you looking for characters with engaging personalities? Are you looking for interesting plots that these characters wind up in? Or are you looking for the themes or ideas that are based on the situation that these characters end up in? <laughs> um... I mean, I think based on, like, my top three, <laughs> I would dare say it's, I'm looking for, like, the themes. Because, um, I mean, kind of the whole point with Disney movies is, like, addressing things that you can't normally address in, like, a movie. Yeah, a live action like of a its live time. Action. Yeah. Especially, especially in, like, the time period that these movies came out. I think that's mainly what I look for. Like, what themes end up coming out based on the situations that these characters get into. But I am also, like, a sucker for just, like, a good story. So. <laughs> and that's really interesting yeah. because it sounds like what was appealing about 101 Dalmatians to you was the characters. Yeah, 101 Dalmatians is probably, like, the the outlier i like the characters in that one more than i do the rest of it <laughs> um but i would say with cinderella and alice in wonderland i'm more so interested in the theming and like what goes on there i am the same way so <laughs> <laughs> um and i can't say the same about my top three because i don't know what sleeping beauty has to say <laughs> <laughs> Like, aside from basic, like, good always triumphs over evil, like, what is what does it have to say? <laughs> yeah, what what does it say? <laughs> uh, but Alice and Cinderella, they definitely have themes that resonate. Um, and I really think that, like, looking at the themes of these movies is our thesis for this podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, it relates to pretty much everything we talk about, like... Like, it obviously, it goes towards plot and characters, but it also goes into music, it goes into context, it goes into mm -hmm. our interpretations on their own. And so, I, I yeah, I, I just think that that's, that was a really good question yeah. to keep in mind, <laughs> at least. Yeah. So, I yeah, we can finally get to my final question, and I promise it's the final one, <laughs> which is, how do you think the films of the Silver Age influence the way the Walt Disney Studios produces films to this day? I mean... Oh, sorry, yawn. <laughs> That took me off guard. Um, so. Oh, that's. Uh, making me think critically. Oh, geez. <laughs> We've been doing good about not getting that critical up till now. So. I know. 
Um, oh, you knew it was coming. Yeah. It's, it's the same question every time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> um, I just don't want to repeat myself, you know. Yeah, I get it. Um, I get it. Well, would you? Would it be all right if I started off this time? Yeah. Okay. Because I already have something planned out. So, I think this was the last era where Disney wanted to be an artist. Mm. I think this is where they gave up and were decided to be, favor commercialism over artistic merit. Mm-hmm. And there are some movies that still fight against that, like Alice in Wonderland and Sleeping Beauty. But uh, unfortunately, not too many people liked them at the time. <laughs> yeah. So ahead of their time. Ahead of their time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think. Even with Cinderella, it, it's that one's. I think that meets the best of both worlds. Yeah. Because it, it, it draws from the artistic work of like the golden age, which we'll get to eventually. Mm-hmm. At some point. Yeah. But it also creates a formula that Disney wants to stick to for consistent success. Yeah. I, de- I definitely agree. Um, now that you say that, I definitely see what you're talking about. Um, because, yeah, th- I, I keep forgetting. Yes, this is <laughs> this is when um, Disneyland was being built. So Walt was, like, fully distancing himself from the animation department. Um, and they were kind of left on their own. Um, and, I mean, yeah. I mean, you can, you can see in at least most of these movies, you can see an artistic intent, but it's just something was holding them back. Um, And I think after the failure of like the two more artistic movies, um, it kind of, it made them, it made them scared. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So they never really committed to that kind of thing again. Nope. Which is sad. Give us more. Give us more. It's really sad <laughs> <laughs> because I know a lot of people. They prefer that alternate approach to Disney movies. Mm. Of of like the really safe, like familiar. I I don't. I know. Neither do I. <laughs> like, there. I think it's just that. When I watch a movie, I think I want to escape into it. Yeah. I'm I'm the same way. Like I Yes, I would like it if it had themes that like connected to the real world, but like I don't want to be in the real world. No. No. I want to be in the silly little fictionalized England <laughs> that Disney movies have. Okay. <sighs> yeah, and <sighs> C'est la vie. C'est la vie. <laughs> just give us more Fantasias. They don't have to be classical. Just <laughs> give mm-hmm. us something, please. Please, I'm starving. Just give me something. <laughs> yep. But uh yeah, I guess that concludes this chapter on Disney Real to Real. <laughs> Uh, at least I really like some of these movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least I hold them close to my heart. Yes, they are they are important to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it, they're only going to get more important as we get to our final two eras. Yes. Here's the thing. If I'm thinking about how to attract our audience, I think we should do the Renaissance next. Mm-hmm. But if I'm thinking about what I want to do, <laughs> then we can do the Golden Age next. Yeah. Um. Let's just do the Golden Age next. <laughs> I mean, if that's what if that's what we want to do, then <laughs> I know. But those movies are just so 
so important to me that it's like if I talk about them, then it's like I'm going to lose motivation <laughs> to keep going. Okay. Then we should probably do the renaissance. Yes. Like save save the cream of the crop for <laughs> yes. for the end. Save best for last. Exactly. Exactly. Best for last. Exactly. So you heard it here first, people. Disney Renaissance coming up next. <laughs> Not clickbait. <laughs> we promise. Yes. <laughs> Although I was thinking that uh our next episode, it will be my turn to pick a subject. Ooh, yay. Yes. Um, I'll be very excited. Yes. And I'm thinking that uh, I want to touch on a subject that I've kind of, I got the commissioned art ready for it. I want to talk about some international Snow Whites. Ooh, yay. Specifically, two written accounts from Africa and Italy, and then a short animated film from Russia. (laughs) That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it has a title worthy of Seven Little Men Help a Girl. Mm -hmm. I think it's called The Tale of the Dead Princess and the Seven Knights. Nice. Yeah. So I think that's what we'll meet up for next week. Nice. Very exciting. Yes. So until then, y'all can reach out to us at DisneyReelToReel at gmail.com or on Instagram at DisReelToRealPodcast. Or on Tumblr at this real to real official. Yes. Dot Tumblr dot com. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I noticed you hadn't put my Electra Heart art up yet. No, I will. I will do that. Um, I will. I will do that. Okay. Um, that was the only reason I had it made. So I want to see it somewhere. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm just. Work has been wild, man. I I can understand. <laughs> I can understand. But I'll I will get to that. Um and the Tumblr will be all pretty and perfect. Okay. No pressure, but <laughs> <laughs> a little pressure. A little bit. Yes. I, I work I work well under pressure. I need a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, I guess until next time, have a magical day, everybody. Bye.